reading from Prisoner B3087. Today I'll be reading the afterword. Afterword. While the story of Jack Gruner is true and remarkable, rar- remarkable, this book is a work of fiction. As an author, I've taken some liberties with time and events to paint a fuller and more representative picture of the Holocaust as a whole. All this was done with Jack's blessing so that the honors and realities of the Holocaust, beyond those that he personally experienced, would not be forgotten. Jack did in fact survive the harsh conditions of the Krakow ghetto by living in a pigeon coop with his parents. He baked bread under the cover of night with his aunts and uncle, had his bar mitzvah in a basement, and watched his parents deported by the Nazis never to see them alive again. Had Plaza Jack hid under the floorboards from Amon Goeth and was in, inexplicably spared by the madman who, when he emerged. Even more incredibly, while Jack was at Plazlo, he worked for a time at the very same Anum Ware factory where the German businessman Oskar Schnauder later s- saved hundreds of Jews from extermination. Schnauder was able to protect the Jews who worked there because Goeth made enough money off the factory to look the other way. But Jack was transferred away from Plaslo a mere three months before Schnauder became prote- began protecting his workers from the Nazis. Jack only learned how close he was to salvation years later when the truth story about Schnauder's list was told. Jack then went on to survive nine more concentration camps at Zelska. He toiled beside the famous salt statues that became a tourist attraction after the war. At Birkenau, he waited al- under the gas heads for death, only to be showered with cold water instead. At Auschwitz, Jack came face to face with the in- infamous Nazi killer Joseph Mengele and lived. Jack endured slavery and starvation, death marches and cattle cars, allied bombings and Nazi beatings. Of the more than one of half a million Jewish kids living in Europe before the war, Jack was one of only a half a million to survive. After the war, Jack immigrated to America and became an American citizen. Less than a year after he became a citizen, he was drafted into the U.S. Army and was sent and sent to Korea to fight in the Korean War. There he survived again, this time with a gun in his hands and a pack on his back. All the while keeping up his promised correspondence with the Gamzer family who had at last immigrated to America. When Jack's two years in the army were up, he came to visit the Gamzers in New York City. He discovered that little Luncha, the little girl he met in Munich, who always sat in the corner reading a book, had grown up into a beautiful young woman. Jack fell in love with Luncha, who had since changed her name to Ruth, and in a few months they were married. Jack and Ruth now live in Brooklyn, New York. They have grown two. They have two grown sons and four grandchildren. Together, Jack and Ruth travel the country to speak about their experiences in the Holocaust. At, I had I had the pleasure of meeting Jack and Ruth while working on this book, and it had it is my honor to write about Jack's life, so the generations that follow will never forget. Jack still bears the tattoo with the number the Nazis gave him. B three zero eight seven, but it is his name, Jack Gruner, that lives on. So I've read now all of the book called Prisoner B three zero eight seven. Um, if you have any questions about the book, just message me them or search them up online. Um, so this book was, in my opinion, a great book. Um, I'd like to know what your opinion is, and this book was, um, if you're wondering how many pages it is, this book is a total of, like, book pages that, okay, so, there is a total number of pages, hang on, 260 pages long, and that's including the afterword. Okay, so thank you for watching these videos. And tell me what you think about Prisoner B3087.